Well, we promised you a winter special, a predator special of the fishing show, and here we are. And we've got some belting content for you today. We've been out with the Corum team catching all different kinds of predators. We've got the cannon and ball of Corum, Gary Knowles and Ed Matthews catching big pike off the seven. We've got Nick Marsh telling you all the secrets of the Ned Rig. And we've got my old mate, Jimmy Salis, catching big Xander off the Avon. Let's catch up with him now and see how he gets on. Hello everybody, you join me today on the banks of the River Avon in Warwickshire. We're fishing for Xander today. Um, got a couple of rods out at the moment, both on the deck. Um, one's flat, one's quiver tipping, but I'll go into the methods a bit more detail later on. We got here this morning, it was quite sunny, quite bright, so we had a quick bash with the lure rods. Um, did lose one fish, but as it stands at the moment, the dead baits have been quiet, but it's gone a bit overcast. We should try here in this swim, maybe move up a bit later on as it gets a bit darker. Generally, my Xander fishing is done, um, dusk till dark, um, and the first couple of hours of dark seems to be more productive than it seems like they come out on the hunt then. But we'll give it a go in the day, we've got the time, um, and we'll see if we can get the net wet. Just reeled a rod in, um, and I just thought I'd go through with you very quickly um, the simple tactics that I use for these Xander on the Avon. Um, I've got a 12 foot dead bait rod, nice and strong, 60 pound braid, and that is run through to a running lead. That's two and a half, three ounces always, nice heavy lead so it holds deck. Obviously if there's more chuck on the river you can go heavier, but really you, you can't really go too heavy. If that's anchored still, the fish aren't going to feel any resistance from that weight. I've got a Corum 28 pound trace on there, that's got big size six hooks on. Um, sometimes I'll tie my own traces and use smaller single hooks if the baits are a bit smaller, but we've got quite big baits today. So that's the um, setup I'm using on that one. That setup on alarms, um, ready to go with a bobbin. Um, on my other rod, it's a quiver tip rod. That is the Trilogy rod with the one and three quarter tip on. Very, very similar setup. I use mono on that one, um, and the bite registration is a lot more sensitive. Tight to the um, lead, tight to the bait, as soon as I get a bite, I can see it in that tip, and it, it's really effective at night. Um, but this one, I do do well on this, so I tend to fish both methods. So we get this one back out, retrick the other one, see if we can get a fish. And just had a run, giving it a bit of line. We should wind down. Yep. We've got something. We haven't, we've got a stick. What the f just a quick look at my quiver tip rod that I use for the Xander. Um, very simple tactics, very similar to what you'd use for barbel fishing really, other than what's on the business end, which is a trace with half a roach on. Um, I use the head section, some people use the tail section or even hole, um, doesn't really matter if there's Xander there, they'll have a go for it. 10 pound mono, one and three quarter tip on the Trilogy rod uh, and a two ounce lead. And I watch the bites through the tip. Reason I've started fishing the tip more for the Xander is after some footage that my friend got, Jim Clark, um, on the bottom, is of the Xander feeding on the bottom, you can see through the water wolf camera that they're picking up the baits, they're engulfing the baits, and then they're almost immediately ejecting it. And when we're fishing on the alarms on the deck, we are missing those. By the time we've got to the rod, the fish has already spat the bait. With the quiver tip, you're tight to the bait, tight to the uh, lead, and you do see the knocks generally before it comes back to the alarm and you can be right on the bite and right on the, uh, on the fish. So yeah, that's it, very simple, free running lead again. Um, and just keep your eye on the tip uh, with the alarm below it.
So the light's fading and um, we've still got the two rods out. We're going to give it a go just to after dark. We are starting to see some signs of, uh, of fish now though. We have had a, a quiet day, um, it's not been great. Uh, we've had some fish showing, um, but nothing on the end of the hook. Uh, so we're going to crack on into dark and hopefully we can get the lights out later and show you a fish. So Xander, I've seen its eye in the lamp, lamp light. I can't see where it's going. There we go. Spooky looking fish in the light. Come back. He's not having it. He's doing his best to shake these hooks. Well, that was a bit of a mess, but it's in. Lovely. I'll give it a minute. Get it up on the bank and have a look. I've got the latex spoon. Barbel spoon. So if the hooks do go in the net like they have here. That should just come out like that, nice and easy. Single hook just inside its mouth, so nearly got away. Steady go. Alright, let's get rid of that. Let's wrap around the fish a little bit. There we go, get everything out of the way. That's it then, as usual. Just after dark, we miss one run on the one rod. And then, not long later, this one sprung into action. It's gonna put its fin up for us. No, it's a nice fish, average stamp for in here. It's not huge, but good fun. Lovely looking fish, in real good nick. Let's have a look at that dorsal, the best bit. Very nice. They're difficult to photograph sometimes because they tend to curl their tails in as well. That's it. It's absolutely freezing. It's gone very, very cold. So I'm glad it's gone off. And there's those teeth. That's what people call them vampires. You don't want to be going the wrong way down there. All right, let's get her back. Well, I don't know about you, I really love watching Jimmy in action. We've got an awesome new series with Jimmy coming next year, following his exploits fishing for lots of different species on lots of different venues. But Jimmy's a bit like me, you know, he likes fishing for predators for a, quite a big chunk of the year. And as some of you who follow me on Instagram will know, I've been catching some belting perch again this year, and most of them I've been catching on the drop shot. Now, I rig these baits in a very different way to most. Most people, if they hook the bait, would hook it on like that and it's free to sort of wiggle from side to side. It can tangle up. It's not always the best presentation. What I do, I go into the sort of bottom of the bait and I literally just have the hook point poking out the top. It's a great edge that. So if you're after tips and tactics that put more fish on the bank like that, make sure you watch this next video. This is a bit of a feature length special. Gary Knowles, Ed Matthews after Big Pike and Big Zander.
Okay, so we've come down to the centre today, myself and Edward Matthews. We're going to show you a few uh, rigs that we use and tips that we've got to uh, to put a few uh, pike and zander on the bank. Uh, we're going to probably fish with smaller baits than you would normally fish for uh, today because there are a yeah. few zander about and it, it gives a, it doubles our chances really, doesn't it? Yeah, down this low on the seven, um, we have got chance of decent pike and decent zander. So like you say, it's going to broaden our options. There's a touch of water on the seven today so there is colour in and uh, we are on tidal stretch as well and that's due at some point so yeah you it's, know, quite, it's quite a tide we expect push up as well couldn't it? that could affect the fishing for an hour or so yeah at some stage. usually find it moves a few fish about um, and it will make it interesting mate yeah so fingers crossed Weather's nice at the moment. It's quite warm for the time of year, isn't it? It's really warm. You know, yesterday it was cold, bitter cold, but today it was cold. It felt cold when I was getting in the car this morning. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I've come from the grim, frozen north, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, day. yeah. So yeah. best yeah, of luck anyway, I, I mate. I think we have a chance. I think we'll get a few runs. Yeah, nice one. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, good luck, mate. Nice one. Well, down on the river, one of my go-to methods, mainly for zander fishing, is uh, fishing the feeder. This is a Corum 120 gram feeder full of chopped up fish and then behind that I like to use 40 pound fluorocarbon and then straight onto wire trace and that extra leader just makes everything disappear with the braid coming down to the feeder, sinks on the bottom and just lays everything out quite nicely. Um, when you cast out into the flow, if you feather it down, it looks quite long, but it comes round and sits really, really quite nice. So yeah, this is just a basic running setup. So when you get a take, free running, like all the rigs that I try and use at the moment, um, yeah, quite basic, but it's caught me a lot of good fish over the, pa over the past. Okay, I'm just gonna talk you through um, the float rig that I'm using today on the river. It's a pretty standard setup, nothing complicated about it. It uh, starts with a, a Zelos 6000 reel loaded with braid. Then I've got um, a 10 foot. This is it's labelled the boat rod, but I, I really like it for fishing close in like this when you're doing the work under under the rod tip. Uh, and it's a it's a 10 foot three pound test curve rod. Um, yeah, really good, strong uh, through action. Good thing for all pike anglers. Um, triple legs on all the guides. Uh, none of us put our rods in rod bags, do we? We just throw them in the bottom of the boat, throw them in the garage, bounce them about. So that does protect it a lot. So that's the that's the main items then. So start with a stop knot there. Um, the next item we have is we thread a bead up. Now a lot of people like a little inconspicuous bead. I don't. I use a nice big luminous one. Because I'm fishing a dead bait, I always fish slightly over depth. Uh, and you can tell your depth as it settles. So as the line pulls through, once you lead its bottom, it'll sit like that. So you know you're kind of eight inches over depth. If you know like that, then you're too far over depth and you just shell it up a little bit. So that's that. Then I use uh, a buffer bead. Um, not everybody likes to use a nut trace for dead baiting, but I do. Sometimes I think the bait can fall back onto the, the braid or the mono and that risks a cut off. So I always fish a, an up trace when I'm float fishing. Then we've got the Snap away, it's great little things these, very interchangeable, so you can take that off. Uh, this is a 15 gram one, that's all you need, for. there's very little flow here, but you can take that off, put a 20 on or a 40 or whatever. Then I've got a trace, maybe about 18 inches long, two trebles, dead roach, uh, dead roach hooked the traditional way, tail up the trace. Uh, I'm just going to underarm it down into the margins before I clip it up. Alright guys, the clip's just pulled out and getting a little bit of movement here. It's the first take of the day, it's still the morning, so I'm not going to give it too long. See what sort of mood they're in. So I'll just pay a bit of line off, check my clutch, need to do my clutch up, set those hooks. And one down. Yeah, we got one. I'll walk round to you, Gary, or shall I? Uh, you can scoop it up, mate, if you don't mind.
Oh. Oh, it's a quick burst there. Don't think it's a massive fish. Yeah, nice pike. There we go. Well, Ed's caught that that quickly. <laughs> I haven't even got my rods out, which is why I'm slow with the net. It's a double, mate. Most powerful fish. Well done, mate. There we go. Good start. Well in. Cheers, bud. Nice start. First fish of the day. Fingers crossed for some more. Scrape a double, I think, mate. Yeah. Should we get the uh, mat out? Yeah, we'll get sorted and uh, give her a breather in the net. I'll get my unhooking gear together, get the mat sorted, and then we'll deal with the fish. It really worked out like that. That's it, we got it. meal. You got it. Found. Beautiful looking fish. There's a bit of touch of colour on the river at the moment, so they're a little bit washed out, but they're still feeding, and it's a slightly rising river, so... That's um, a good start. Don't, yeah, don't be put off by fishing on the rise as long as the water temperature is right. Um, it is running off warm land at the moment, the river, because of the rain and that. So, but yeah, beautiful looking fish. It's the first nice bit of water we've had for a while as well, isn't it? So yeah. it, it'll get them on the move. And that fish, that rod had been out about half an hour, We've seen a few strikes, so I'm going to get another one back, back in. I think she's there or thereabouts. That's, That's the one. That's a better bend. And they, this is a longer 12 foot rod. And the advantage of that is picking the line up quick for those strikes. You can get Oops. away with it in this swim with it being a larger swim. It helps if you're getting over a shelf as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. He's going for that bush down there. Another pike. They're fighting well, aren't they? They are, mate. I mean, I'm not playing it lightly. There That's a three go. and a quarter rod, isn't it, as well? Yeah. So one. Oh, a little bit bigger. Bit bigger. 13. Yeah. 12, 13 maybe. Yeah, another double. Yes. Only just duked in scissors as well. Should we uh, drop him in the mat, mate? Yeah, we'll get the mat. Give him a breather, I'll get the gear ready again and uh, get it sorted. So if there's two of you, it always helps if you work as a team. Um, not just with your fishing and trying different rigs, but when you've got a fish on. Um, so Ed's, Ed's just going to unclip the trace now, then he's going to go and get the unhooking gear ready. I'll just keep, I'll give it a drink, let it just rest up for a minute, and then we'll both go and help with the unhooking. Pale, isn't it? Yeah, well, there you go. We uh, unhooked it together. Like Gary said, it's so much easier when you've got another pair of hands, and it makes sense. Much kinder for the fish as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, loads of Much kinder for the fish. So it's the second taker today. It's both still come, more, still both, morning. Both come from the same spot. You same sometimes spot, get that little. Rod. You sometimes get that yeah. little hot spot, don't you? Maybe it's a shoal of fish. Maybe just something they like hanging in. Yeah. You can't always tell why, but yeah, very, it's a great start. Very small bait that one. Yeah. I was uh, edging my bets for a Z, mate. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping. We're hoping we're going to get a Z as well yeah. later. So we're in a location where where we can get pike hands and us. So. Yeah. As Ed said, we've edged our bets a little bit. We've gone slightly smaller trebles. We've got a couple of rods out on small baits as well. Okay. Right, we'll should get we go back? back? Okay, mate. Been done, I think.
be honest with the size of these baits, I think a perch would have it. Yeah, small zeds, I think. Small zeds, aren't they? It's nearly pulled it out of that. See, it's, yeah, it's scratched. scratched up like yeah. that. Yeah. Toothpicks, aren't they? Oh, that one was absolutely flying off. Would you want it, Ed? Uh, if we can move that rod over there, mate, and I'll land it underneath it. Yeah, that slammed that bait and just rocketed off with it. So I'm not gonna, wasn't going to hang about striking. <laughs> not when they're like that. It's quite funny. There was a single bleep, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? You went. Oh, I think that's wind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then. Poof. It usually is wind when you're here, mate. <laughs> that's same rod again. I don't know if there's a little cool, area out there it? or they just like the way it's presented, but. There we go. There we go. Just nicely in the scissors there. It's where you want to come. Strike early or come in the chops. No deep. Going deep into them, smaller fish. This one, still a beautiful fish, lovely yellow markings on it. So, you've got a mat big enough to take a big fish, but also give you plenty of room so you can get on top of it yourself and be with the fish to help unhook it. No monster, good sport nonetheless. Oh. So just put my third fish back and they've taken a favourable to one particular rig. Now when I turned up, started with three rods on three different setups just to hedge my bets and see what the fish were up to. And the rig that they've taken a fancy to, every fish has fallen to this. So much so, I've set another rod up exactly the same, but it's the Dyson rig. And it kind of falls out of favour. You don't hear many people fishing with it. It's a great uh, rig for eel fishing, but for pike fishing and suspending live or dead baits off the bottom and still having a free running rig, it's brilliant. And it's that free running um, capabilities of the rig that make it appealing to me. Because as soon as the fish hits the bait, it's pulling it out the clip and then it can take the line off. And on that last take I had, it was absolutely tanking away. So rod of choice for fishing this rig is the 12 foot bait rod that Corum do. Uh, the snapper rod, 12 foot, 3.25 pound test curve. Um, it can cope with a decent sized lead, which I have to use to anchor the bait in position. And the extra length makes it really, really easy for me to cast out because um, it is a bit of an awkward thing to cast this rig is because you've got three different components the lead the float and the base bait itself and the aim is to try and get them to spread as they cast and then feather it down and pull them back together so to start off with it's if you imagine a normal free running rig up here you've got normal running rig with a, a loop going down to the stop and then off that you have a clip with my trace I like to fish a clip so I can change my traces at the drop of a hat or if the hooks get snarled in the net you can just undo the clip uh, you're not dragging a rod round on the bank and everything then um, so as soon as you get a take that's going to pull out and be free running now off this run ring is a piece of line and you can make that as long as you want I normally aim for about five to six feet. I put a stop there to kick it out. And then this is a Corum uh, surface bomb. So used for carp fishing, for surface baits, dog biscuits, bread and all that. But I use them as sub floats. They're ideal, quite a camouflage color. Um, just sit in the water, very buoyant. So I can 
you know, it'll, it's enough to keep a large size bait off the bottom. So that runs up to there, down to your lead. And so everything is suspended, just hanging in the water, waiting for the pike to come and eat it. Not far off the bottom. And the more I tighten the line, once I've cast it out, the, the lower that this float goes and the closer to the bottom it gets. It can be a killer rig in the right circumstances. So I'm just going to talk you through uh, how I prefer to hook my baits on the Dyson rig. Now, whether it's a live or a dead bait, I hook it the same because I want it to sit in the water as if it is alive. Um, fishing deads on the Dyson can be very, very effective. So I do hook them like live baits. I want them to sit like that uh, just to offer them, you know, a big flank to the, the fish, like to, to the pike or the zander. So they see the broad side of the fish is spot on. So the first thing I do is if I've caught fish on the trace before, I check the hook points. And if I've got one point that's slightly blunt, that's the one that goes in my bait. I want the sharp points for going in what I'm trying to catch. So I just scratch a scale off by the dorsal. That's the hook that's furthest up, not the point hook. The next one up is gonna go in the dorsal of the fish. So scratch the scales off and then just hook it through. And then I like to put a bait flag on there or a piece of elastic band or something to help retain it. And then the bottom point hook, again, check the points on each hook on the treble, pick the blunt one. And then this hook is either going in the nose of the bait or in the peck. Now the distance between these two hooks, it would probably sit better. You don't want to put any tension on that really because it make the bait sit untidy. So I'm going to stick it in the peck and in the root of the peck, the bait can, you know, it's quite tough there. It will pull out on a strike, which is what you want. You don't really want your baits coming back. The, the uh, trace has got to come free. And so that is how See when I hang it, like it's gonna hang underneath that subfloat, it sits in a natural position, even though that's well dead. <laughs> so hold the lead in your hand, separate the, uh, the bait from your main line, let it dangle. And I like to just swing it round to keep it out of the way. And then lob it out, feather it down, and that's it. It's important to keep, make sure the bait has butted right up to the run ring and isn't out on a big, big long line on its own and which it is now, it's nice, nicely butted up together. And then you can wind down. I like to wind down quite tight. So I'm pulling the bait to the, to the bottom. The lead's, the lead's not moving. I'm just winding the float down. And then as I set this up now, it's on quite a tight line. I like to pay a bit of line off. And you can see that it's going like that because of the buoyancy on the sub float out there. So that's coming up in the water and just hanging that bait off the bottom somewhere around this sort of height. And that's ideal for a predator. It's going to be right in their face. So yeah, I've, got, I've let it come up now. There's just a bit of tension there. I reckon one more. One more loop back on the reel and then open bail arm. So when it pulls it out the clip, like I say, it's free running. You can take line then without any, you know, minimal resistance. And I put it in the clip here. And normally they hit it that violently when they attack the bait out there, it pulls it straight out of the clip. They don't really feel the clip. And that's it. On the alarm. And we're fishing. No. No. No, this can't happen. There we go. Yeah. Right, gonna give it a bang. Yes. Get some. Hmm. No head shaking at the moment there. Eh? No! Oh man. 
on the smelt. What we got, mate? No pike marks. It's a Xander. Big Z. Well, mate. Compass Rose, come to. It is what it is, mate. I felt like a Z as well. Yeah, that. well, mate, you know, if it was a bike, yeah. there's no lacerations or anything yeah. to your bike, uh, to your bait, just stab wounds. So it's, uh, it was a Z. You thought it was playing it as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, felt like a good one. Finicky take as well. Yeah. I wonder if you got had a pick up earlier on it because you did have a funny occurrence, didn't you? Oh, well. Mate, Let's still plen plenty timely, yeah. What are you saying, mate? I'm saying, do you want to take it? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to take this, Ed? Well, after just losing what felt like and looked like it could have been a very good Xander. Yeah. It's just pulled out the clip on it. But the yeah, take is very similar. It's a bit, it's, it's really, it's a bit sketchy, isn't it, mate? To be honest, with the flow being what it is, it's really difficult, isn't it, to see if it is a take. Don't think it is this time. No. It is tricky. Hold the braid too much and you risk the fish feeling it yeah, and at its it. end. Yeah. You don't hold it and the current pulls it out. Yeah. Your little fish starting to move around again. Mm. Just feel right for another bite. Yeah, the bait's right against the lead, isn't it? It's not a fish. No nuts. But there is movement, I think. It's a small bait. Fingers crossed. This time. It's not your day, mate. What's going on? You've had a bit of a tangle there. <sighs> that hasn't helped. <laughs> Here you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I've not had a take all morning I've just missed one on my right hand rod what happened to the middle rod <sighs> that went that went as well what do you think happened to that bit of a Joe Mangle tangle wasn't there mm. And then, this one's his last gone. rod that was in, left in. Do you know what I think? Just I, do you know what I think what's happening? I think there's a sturgeon <laughs> trailing 200 yards of line has gone through my lines because I can't be this incompetent. I don't. I think they're just on the on the way to me. Oh, you're going <laughs> to catch your lines out. You're going to catch one with three baits in it, aren't you? <laughs> right, this is the sardine I've just put on. Yeah, it's not been out long, has it? No. So I'm going to give it a go. Good luck, mate. No, this is ridiculous. Something's happening here. What's happening here? Let's have a look at that bait. Because this is a sardine, we'll be able to see if it's been quite soft bait sardines. So if there's any sort of indication of a pickup, it will be on the bait. No, nothing. No. Maybe there's a fish towing around a rig or something. Unclipped, unclipped all three of his you know rods. What? Do you know what? Joking aside, that's yeah. three takes like that, none of them doing much. Mm. You know what we can hope for though, mate, is that they don't pull any of mine out. <laughs> or you catch it <laughs> yeah. and we release it. Yeah. That is 
That's a little bit strange for all three to go like that, isn't it? It is, but then... yeah, yeah. Very un un uncharacteristic. In a row as well. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the feeding spells can be short and sweet, but <laughs> what's happened to Gary is a bit abnormal. <laughs> He's not funny, is he? <laughs> Good luck, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> I think it might have dropped it. Useless. Now that could have been a Xander. Yeah. He's pulled the, swam off with the bait and then just dropped it. In a funny mood today, aren't they, Xander? Oh no! I do not, I do not believe that. I really don't believe that. A bait's that big. Yeah. Two trebles on it. And it arced over, yeah. the rod bent over. Mate, I thought at last it's happened. <laughs> having I don't such, believe it. such a run of bad luck. I do not believe it. Thankfully, it's not rubbing on. <laughs> but we just discussed, didn't we, about t changing that rod. How long's that been out there, mate? Five minutes. Just to change the tactics. D he's put a lead presentation on, free running lead rig, and five minutes, cast it out a little bit further, add a take, blitzing take, and... Struck into it. Yeah, yeah. Struck into it, rod's out its door, it's on, kicking. Yeah. It's just gone. How's your Hawkins look? <laughs> Day of the year, this, isn't it? Right, let's get going. You know, I'm going to slowly wind down onto that. Yep. You got him. Putting up a lovely scrap, these fish. I'm just going to move this rod for you, Ed. Yeah, no worries, mate. Spot on. So yeah, a bit of a more gentle, more gentle take, but nothing gentle about the scrap. Well, I'd have to say, <laughs> this is getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> what rig you just set up, Gary? <laughs> It might be similar to this. <laughs> that same rod again, though. There's a little spot out there. You know, none of the other other rods have gone. Oh, she's got a bit of a sore on her nose, but she's only got one hooky. That hook's right in its beak. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. There's the advantage of the longer rod now, Ed, isn't it, in this swim? Yeah, definitely. People come in. There we, we go. It. It's not a bad fish, that, mate. Worthy of a set of scales? Yeah. Long nose. God, it's got, it's got, got some a sore on its nose. We'd recognise yeah. it again. Yeah. Herpes. Got some damage. Yeah. Got a sore on the end of yours, haven't you, Gary? <laughs> He's got the Matthews. He's got... <laughs> no, I can't say it. It's from me. <laughs> what did you catch that one? It, do, it does oh. look like you've touched it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Lovely long fish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Enough giggling. <laughs> They're knocking tools together. All right. Lovely long river pipe there and it's definitely one worthy of weighing. Biggest one so far. So I've zeroed a quorum snapper boat and bank sling. Go and do the honours, mate. Go Tell on. me what she goes. Oh, very nice. 21, 17-1, <laughs> mate. 17-1. 17, 17 one. One, yeah. <laughs> You're up, bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cracky fish, mate. Cheers, dude. I certainly recognise her. Look at that. I wonder what's 
cause that? Is that an abscess, a yeah. tumour or something? Yeah, they, pike can be, as they grow older and get a bit bigger, they can be a bit susceptible to that, to be honest with you. Just want to cradle her a bit more. That's better. Lovely long river fish. Plenty of bait food here. We've been watching the bits top all day. It's key to getting a good swim on the river is finding the bait. Um, that said, there's spots within spots. That's four fish now, all on one rod. I might, uh, I might have a really terrible cast with my left hand rod now. It might just wander a little bit to the left. Do you know how these things happen? That'd be nothing new, mate. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's go have some more. Let's go and get it back. Well, it's been a rural day, hasn't it, Ed? It has, mate. <laughs> it looked like it wasn't going to happen. Everything I did went wrong. I've lost a, a good zander. I've lost a good pike. Mate, it's full of highs and lows, and most yeah. of the highs were for me, weren't they, <laughs> at one point? <laughs> and I was, uh, we got a nice brace shot here. Very lucky. I was just over with Ed, helping yeah. him land his fish, when mine shot off, so I ran back. It's a nice mid, mid to upper double. She tried to snag you up. She, she had, tried, had to get everything. right up the bank, didn't you? Everything I've done today, even this one snagged me up in a swim I've never been snagged up in before. But that fish, mate, you've got there, the markings on that, it's a special fish, that's right, beautiful. beautiful. Should beautiful. we get him back? All's well, the ends well, eh? Well done, buddy. Cheers, Great thank day. You. Well, Gary had an absolute nightmare of a day, didn't he? It was fun to watch, but he persevered. It came good in the end, you know. Those guys really do know what they're doing. There's someone else who's full of tips and tactics, gems of advice that'll put more fish on the bank my old mate Nick Marsh. Here he is talking about the Ned Rig, the tactic to use for perch now it's got cold. These edges would definitely put more fish on the bank. So it's late autumn and uh, we're coming into winter. Uh, before you know it, it's gonna get very, very cold. We'll be down to zero degree temperatures fairly consistently. When that does happen, the Ned Rig for me does come into play. Um, I do use it a fair amount. When the water temperatures drop, the fish become a little bit more lethargic. They're not chasing lures like they were. Uh, it's harder to get those reaction strikes. And so in that scenario, I think you're better off trying at least an inert bait uh, that's not really doing much, slowly bumping it around the bottom and trying to pick up the old fish that way. I certainly in the past, have uh, done reasonably okay on the Ned Rig. I've certainly had situations where I'm out and I'm moving different lures around the, the, the swims at pace, uh, not catching any fish, switching to a squirm or one of the other Flotex lures and uh, got the result that I'm after. But as a rig, it is used quite a lot um, and the fish do wise up to it. So what I wanna talk about is how we can switch things up with the Ned Rig as you go into the winter. So just quickly, the rod and reel I use for this type of fishing. Here I've got the, uh, the ZT rod. It's a one to 10 gram rod. Uh, I've got the new switch reel in a 1500 size. Onto that, I've got 11 pound Illuminate braid. I've got a leader that's about four foot long. 
and that is either six or ten pound fluorocarbon. Right, and now down to the business end and the bit that I really want to talk about. Uh, as you can see, that is really what I would call a default squirm, right? It's the large size squirm in a natural colour, and I've just got it on a five gram jig head. It's a size one five gram jig head. So like I say, that, that is your default really, your default Ned. Like with any lure, the fish cam wise up to this. You know, it's not the silver bullet. Uh, we are gonna have to work at this a bit. And just like with any lure, chuck it at them too many times, they will start to wise up to it. So what I wanna talk about is a few things that we might try to try and keep the bites coming on the Ned rig. First thing, uh, before we get onto the lure, let's have a look at the jig head. This is five gram jig head, fairly standard, size one. Play around with swapping that out for the three gram. That will make it drop slower in the water. Remember, we're bumping this and there will be a little bit of a fall. A three gram will drop slower. Uh, you can go even lighter than that, down to twos and ones. I certainly do that as well. Um, and just trying a little bit more finesse. Um, that's definitely something to play around with. Of course, absolutely no reason why you can't fish weedless on a Cheb rig. Uh, so certainly play around with that presentation and again in terms of the size of the weight you can certainly play around with that as well. Obviously the other thing to play around with is the colour. The squirms come in a lot of different colours now. Certainly when the water's coloured I tend to like to create strong profiles so that's either really light silverfish or really dark the dark lord but certainly have a play around with the colours. Um, everyone's got their favourites but certainly with all that put to one side I find the most effective thing to do when the bites dry up on the full size squirm like that is to switch up the profile of that lure. I've been in a swim before where I've been casting just the, you know, the full size squirm out of the pack around the swim. Uh, I'm not getting anything. Unbelievably, I've simply trimmed about a centimetre or a centimetre and a half off the top of the squirm and had a fish straight away. So if you can see there, I've got three just standard squirms. You can see I've cut them to different lengths to create what I call a stubby. Play around with that. You know, these are soft, soft plastics. They're only made of Flotex rubber, easy to cut. Trim them, play around with them, change up the profile. That might help you get those bites you're after. Of course, the other thing you can try is the, the five centimeter squirm, the mini squirms. Um, that will obviously change up the profile. It's a classic technique, really, whether you're using shads, creature baits, or indeed these squirms, um, scaling things down when things are tricky can sometimes get you the bite you're after. And finally, just a couple of other things that you can try. I've started to put skirts on some of my squirms, just again to switch up the profile. And something that I've always done is put my squirms all in a bag and just apply oil, which you can get in a number of different flavors. And anchovy oil has always been one of my favorites to just give those lures a bit of a boost. And so there you have it. There's my take on the Ned rig and how you might want to switch it up to keep those bites coming through the winter. Well, there was some stuff in there that even I haven't tried yet on the Ned Rig, and I've tried a lot. Nick really does know his stuff. And if you want to catch more perch this year, make sure you listen to what Nick's got to say. And make sure you tune into his YouTube channel as well, because he's always got loads of great new content, as well as over here on the Corum channel. Well, I'm going to carry on my day's drop shotting. Pretty slow today, but I'll just fish slower and see if I can catch a few like that. Until next time, I hope to see you on the bank sometime, hopefully with the big predator in your hands. We've got quite a long winter ahead, I think, and hopefully it'll be full of big fish. See you next time.